There are many different types of Minecraft players. The miner, the builder, the adventurer, the fighter. It is a game with endless possibilities. But today I asked myself, what was it like to fill in the role of farmer? Spending hours planting and gathering crops, taking care of the land around you and producing food. As someone who mainly plays in creative, I was looking to try something new. So here is my 100 days as a farmer in Minecraft. I started off day one in a gorgeous autumn biome and began the longtime Minecraft tradition of cutting down an entire tree with your fist. Near my spawn point was a cave with iron and coal ore, so I made myself a wood pickaxe, then a stone one, and managed to get iron on my first day. However, this took up a lot of the daytime and I was going to need a place to rest. While looking for a decent spot, I found a broken nether portal and looted the chest. I kept walking until I found a field of pumpkins, which looked like a lovely spot. I found a clearing and placed down my crafting table. I was getting really hungry, so I chopped up some of those pumpkins and ate my first meal in this new world. But as it became dark, I found myself in danger, so I holed myself up and waited the night out. When I emerged the morning of day two, I figured that I should look for some supplies for a bed. So I strayed away from my camp, but instead of finding sheep, I ended up finding an entire village. There was lots of goods in the chest, including food and seeds. However, I very quickly noticed that this village had no farms. How did they eat? It was very obvious they needed a decent food supply, and so I decided it would be best if I moved closer. I grabbed a bed and ran back for my stuff so I could settle in a valley nearby. On day three, I began to clear the area that I wanted to call home. I wanted to get a jump start on farming, so I made my first little infinity pool and planted the seeds I had gotten from the village. Interestingly enough, there was a strange crop called Inferium Essence, which wasn't edible but seemed important to plant. After a long day of labor, I went to bed. On day four, I cleared out a nearby cave. Once again, it was mostly iron and coal, but I knew it would help. I began to make some space for a good starter home, so I cleared the autumn trees. I also went to get some fish and struggled a lot, to the point of it being almost comical. It made me slightly relieved that I was a farmer and not a fisherman, because I cannot imagine doing this for a hundred days. You fish- oh my god. Um... <laughs> no! <laughs> Day 5 mostly consisted of cutting down more trees and creating more space while gathering materials. I started out my little cottage, However, I wasn't quite satisfied with the materials that I was using, so on day 6, I went adventuring for a bit and then replaced the wood on my house. Days 7, 8, and 9 mostly consisted of me building my little cottage. I didn't want to make it super fancy because honestly I was worried that I may decide to move out again later, so I used mostly vanilla materials with the exception of white stained planks which are from the mod Quark. On day 10, I focused on the details of the outside, such as the windows. Again, I wasn't trying to make this super detailed, so yeah. On day 11, I went to the village to grab some supplies, such as spruce trap doors. I used these to add shutters, and then I focused on the inside of the house, adding coffered ceilings, smoothing out the roof from the inside, and making a little fireplace. At this point, I was spending most of my nights sleeping, which well cut down my time. I was not ready to deal with the load of monsters yet. On day 12, I sorted my chest pretty poorly and realized that I would eventually need a separate space for my chest. So I kept farming wood, trying to gather enough supplies for future projects. But as I was getting lower on iron, it became apparent that I needed to go mining. For someone who was planning on mostly farming, I was kind of surprised at how much gathering I was doing as well. So I spent day 13 mining down to level 11 to begin my search for diamonds and other supplies. For now, I was doing basic tunnel mining. I sadly didn't find any diamonds this time around, but I did find copper and tin, which I think is a part of the forestry mod. I emerged on day 14 and put my stuff away. Some of the spruce trees I had planted had grown, and so I cut them down. I decided that I wanted to use a lot of spruce in my farm builds because honestly, it's one of my favorite Minecraft woods. Curious to know which Minecraft wood is your favorite if you're interested in discussing it in the comments below. I then went to bed and woke up on day 15 realizing that if I was going to do some true farming, I needed to start leveling and smoothing the land around me. So I spent the next three days trying to create smoother and flatter land. This was one of those moments where I regretted not settling in the pumpkin field, as that area was much flatter naturally but I was still so determined to grow crops for this little village, and honestly, I really liked the trees around me. When it came to leveling, I didn't just make everything flat, but also spent some time in making the increase more subtle by adding space between layers. In between days, I also made sure to harvest any crops and continue cutting down trees. 
On day 19, when I was finally feeling okay with the leveling I had done, I dove right back into the mines to continue collecting resources. Once again, I didn't find any diamonds, but found lots of metals. On day 20, I came up from the mines quickly so that I could replenish supplies and harvest any crops that had grown. I also kept creating Inferium seeds as I found it in the mines. After a quick check-in, I dove right back in again. I was pretty determined to find diamonds, but was also still looking for any coal and iron for the loads of tools I was going to need to take care of my farm. As I was mining, I heard zombie noises and tried to look for the cave they were in. Little did I know, this would be my greatest mistake. Just maybe, so maybe, just maybe. <laughs> I was pretty sad about losing all of my levels and worst of all, one of the three lives I had in this little world. Just such a silly mistake of all things. Eventually though, I came across an area full of mossy cob that led me to a mine shaft. There was plenty of good materials and even some chests, but even better, there was a lava lake and sitting on the shore was the first diamonds I saw. I quickly ran back to a crafting table and made myself a new diamond pickaxe so I could take some obsidian home with me. As I came out of the mine, I emerged near the end of day 23 and created an enchanting table. I knew I was going to need bookshelves though, so I went to bed and headed out to the village the morning of day 24. The village only had a few, unfortunately, less than I needed, and with no cows in sight, I began to worry. But as I was looking through my recipes, I learned that I could make books with straw, which was collected from chopping rice stalks, which I did have. The enchantment table used a different system, which looked like Tetris and was a bit silly. So after some mob killing and a day of bookmaking, I enchanted my diamond pick. I now had a vein miner enchantment that allowed me to break multiple blocks at once, which would make resource gathering so much easier. Super excited about my new sweet pickaxe, I spent the 25th day mining and gaining XP to make more tools. On day 26, I created and enchanted a new axe, which was a huge upgrade. But with the enchantment table taking up so much space and my chest beginning to overflow, it was seriously time to make a storage room. On days 27 and 28, I began to build the room. I dug out a little basement in my cottage. I personally always prefer to have chest rooms underground because I think it means there's more room for expansion. It's kind of a tradition to make my chest rooms the way I do. I think mostly because I started this style when you couldn't put two chests directly next to each other. With everything set up, I started bringing down stuff from upstairs and organized decently. I made sure to leave space for my enchanting table and soon enough I had a much better storage room. On day 29, I harvested my crops and realized that maybe it was time to give my old farmhouse a kitchen. I started with a stove, which was a part of the Farmer's Delight mod. There were a few different options for a fridge, but eventually I settled on one and went out to get resources for it. But once I had my fridge and stove, something was missing, a little cabinet. So I made myself a wee little pantry and ended the day making myself some lovely fried rice. Also, this wandering trader showed up and just kind of, you know, like tripped outside of my house and you know, that was a bit weird, but at least he gave me a lead. <laughs> By day 30, I had my tools, I had my storage, and it was time to dip my toes in the river of farming. I hadn't built up much of a crop supply, so what better to do than start a sweet berry farm? I decided I wanted to use spruce for this, and I made a perimeter. I wasn't super concerned about mobs coming after my very dangerous berries, so I left the fencing mostly open just for detail. I spent the night digging out where I planned to put my bushes and went to bed as it got dark. The next morning, I quickly made some coarse dirt and filled in the holes. I wanted a bit of separation between my berry bushes, so I made these hedges to do the trick. Then I quickly visited the village to grab some berries. I didn't realize it, but this was probably the one crop they had. Nonetheless, I took all of them and planted them on my farm and added pathways between them. As I was finishing up the very first farm, these pillagers came to my house, probably trying to take my berries, so I did what must be done to protect my precious farm. The next day, I woke up and added lights to my farm and made my first lamppost. I felt very happy with my berry farm and ready to build another one, but I kind of just went, hmm, 
I need some more spruce. Let me just pop over to the village. Completely forgetting that I had unalived this gray man the previous day and that he had marked me with a bad omen. So as I naively walked into the village, a raid started. Luckily, it was a small raid and I had been growing strong from my farm labor so much that the villagers feared me and went into hiding. But actually, this was kind of horrible because I spent the entirety of day 32 trying to find the last pillager. Once he had fallen to my axe, I emerged victorious. But only a single villager was celebrating and the rest had fled and gone. Or worse. I walked back to my farm in the rain, sad I couldn't protect the village that I had promised to feed. But day 33 was a great day! I managed to get enough leather to build myself a great backpack and repair my pickaxe. It was definitely time for a mining trip. The mines were a great place to cheer myself up as there was lots of ore to grab. I got iron, gold, and traversed many caves until I came across an interesting settlement with a chest that had contained two ancient tombs. These ancient tombs allowed me to increase my enchantments beyond their possible level. With much excitement, I started mining to get XP to get Fortune 4 on my pickaxe. And when I reached level 30, I very happily used the anvil in the camp. Feeling rather successful, I went home emerging from the mines on day 34. In the mines, I had found more of this strange essence and learned more about the amazing tools I can make by farming it. It was at this moment that I realized I could use my farming abilities to create great tools without dungeon crawling and monster fighting, and I was feeling more motivated than ever to start building my farm. I started off day 35 creating a path from my house outwards, and I began to lay out what would be the next two crop farms. I did start to notice that the giant cave hole that was my mind was a bit too big and a bit too in the way. The morning of day 36, I woke up and completed the farm patches. I planted onions and cabbages, but I realized if I was going to keep up with all this, I probably needed help. So I went out to get pumpkins, seeing these cute dogs on the way. With the pumpkins and some straw, I made some straw golems. Now, these guys were so cute, and I was gawking at them for a while, and then strangely more pillagers showed up, and this time to attack my cute little guys? I gave them the what for, and realized it was definitely time to get some more defense. So I spent the night hunting down skeletons for bones. And the very next day, I went back to those dogs and I tamed three of them. I gave them each unique collar colors and let them sit to guard the house. I was curious about the golems and still wanted to see how they worked. So I bone mailed some cabbage and watched this little guy harvest it. I played around with the chest placement just to see what worked best and watched him do his job because oh my god, this little guy is so cute. I added some more details to my path and then went to bed. The hole for the mine was starting to really annoy me, so when I woke up, I began to cover it up and made myself a cute little mine shaft like entrance and connected my house path to it too. But right before I went to bed, more pillagers tried to attack my little guys. So I got rid of them and gave my little golems a goodnight kiss. Unfortunately, I lost all footage for day 39, which was really sad because I built a cute little pumpkin patch to get more heads for my golems. So cut to days 40 and 41, I found myself wanting to build a fire pond. As someone who grew up near a lot of farms, fire ponds were still pretty common because who on earth is putting a fire hydrant in the middle of a wheat field? According to Google, a fire pond is an area of water which is kept so it can be used if there is a fire. Usually, but not always, it was man-made. While I didn't really plan on my entire farm catching fire anytime soon, I thought it would be a cute landscaping detail and a silly moment like this where I can teach you about the existence of fire ponds. I added a bunch of little flora and stuff to make it look kind of natural, and then I also built a tiny little dock! <laughs> On day 42, I wandered and collected more plants and things so that I could landscape the area around my farm. Just as I had made my mining more proficient, it started to feel like I needed to make my plant collecting and adventuring more proficient. So on day 43, I left my house to go look for a horse. I kind of just picked a direction and wandered. I was hoping to find wild horses, so I tried to look for flatter areas. Eventually, I came across a pine forest and cut down some trees in case I wanted to use the wood for building. But that forest led me straight out to a tundra where I found one of the largest villages I have ever seen. Could this be where all my neighbors ended up? Had I found another village to trade with? I ran with the excitement to the village and completely forgot that I had bad omen too. A raid immediately started. I quickly went for the pillagers and cleared a couple waves. In between, I looked around for any resources I could and even halfway through decided to take a nap. Look, 
I know I brought bad omen, but this farmer still needs their beauty sleep. When I woke up, I started to use their own weapons against them, pulling out a crossbow that I had taken from the fallen comrades. But soon enough, the ravager appeared and oh my god, this guy hurt. But soon, I had my victory as the sun set. On day 45, I spent the day gathering supplies from the village. This village had cats, so I made some little cages and took them home so I could tame them. And just as I had been looking for, the village had horses. I tamed the first one I saw and rode it home the next day. When I got home, I attached my horse to one of the fences and began sorting my backpack into my chest. I pulled out the cat cage and tamed one of the kitties. I ended up naming her Satsuki, which is actually the name of my real life cat, who at the time of this recording just finished recovering from surgery. After all that, I went to bed. It was day 47. I had a horse, three farm patches, and it was time to finally build a barn. I had an idea of what I wanted to build, so I started gathering supplies, starting with collecting a bunch of spruce and dark oak wood. I wanted to do something with clay, and I knew that I needed a better shovel to do so, so I went mining for levels and made a good shovel to start collecting clay the next day. Day 48 marked the first day of my search for clay, and little did I know this was going to be a struggle. I went to the ocean nearby my house, but it was mostly gravel. I struggled to gather clay as I walked along the shore, but eventually I came across another village. This one was more plains themed, and making sure I had no bad omen effect, I walked right in. This village was very strangely generated, and I even came across this fire that was just pouring over this house, and so I put it out. Luckily, I found some clay slash terracotta in the village, but by the time I was done looking, it was night, so I had a little sleepover. I still needed more clay, so in the morning, I wandered off into some wetlands. My logic must have been wrong, because I thought that since clay is so common in like a swamp, it would be here as well, but like I said, I was wrong. Luckily, as I came back into the spruce biome, there was a river chock full of clay, and I was able to grab some and go home. I wanted a lovely warm palette for my barn to match the trees around me, so the next morning I gathered flowers for dye and began slowly crafting all the materials I needed for this build, as well as smelting my loads of clay. Once I had my materials, the next few days blurred together as I assembled the barn. I used to do some professional building and was much more used to working in creative. But that was past me, and I am a farmer now. So I spent most of my time constructing this barn from the ground up. My plan was to have stables and a hayloft for my hay. Most of this was modded blocks, but regardless, here are some screenshots of the barn if you're wanting to recreate it. Maybe I should try and make it with all vanilla materials too. On days 55 to 57, I completed the inside of the barn, making access to the top floor, bringing my horse inside and adding lots of hay bales. Overall, I was super happy with this build and starting to feel like my farm was finally coming together. As I went outside on day 58, I had noticed that my first straw golem had passed away, and I was honestly a bit devastated. I had some responsibility as I hadn't really prepared myself to take care of these guys yet, so I did some research on how to keep them happy and some prep, and I brought two more to life. I had a barn, lovely company, and more crops to plant, so I once again got to work clearing and flattening land to prep for more crops and more animals. On day 60, I started to create some rice terraces. I had never visited a rice farm in person, but I am familiar with the idea of rice terraces. I actually started building my rice terraces with wood in between, and then I was like, hey, maybe I should look up what is actually used, because wood would rot, right? So I did some research and rice terraces are formed through various methods including carving, natural erosion, and construction using mud and stone. So I chose a stone I had an abundance of and made my small farm. While Minecraft building definitely doesn't need to follow the rules of our world, I find it to be a great opportunity to research and discover why and how things are constructed. I just find it can make things so much more immersive. So while yes, this rice farm is by no means an accurate depiction, I still learned about something which I think is cool. On day 62, I had finished the rice fields and it was time to make a wheat farm. Considering I had all these little guys to look after and they needed wheat, it seemed like it should be a priority. I started to make these more circular gardens. They probably aren't the most efficient, but I don't know, I felt like it made it look cooler. It was day 63 and I made two more plots for planting and realized I was gonna need more space for animals. I wanted it to be behind the barn, so I started using my big boy pickaxe to clear and even out more land. On day 64, I continued to clear the land while also trying to make it as natural as possible. And I created two pens. And once again, pillagers kept showing up and at this point these guys were just annoying. 
But as the day ended, I began to realize that on all my adventures, all my trips gathering materials, I had rarely come across farm animals, except for one place. And then it struck me. If I was going to get animals for my farm, I was going to have to pull off the greatest farmer heist of the century. I was going to have to take them from the village. A sheep or two, a cow or two, surely no one would notice. So the next day I began constructing rails and all kinds of materials and started to dig. I spent the next two days tunneling, building, and creating the most perfect straight shot rail system. Not only was I pulling off a heist, I was pulling it off in style. But on day 68, as I walked into the village on my tippy toes, I started a raid. Yep, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, maybe I'm just a little airheaded. So I spent the night completing the raid and the villagers once again commended me. But it was day 69, and it was time to steal some animals. In my brain, I had thought this whole thing would go as smooth as possible, and boy was I wrong! These animals wanted to do anything but get in the minecart, and I spent the entire day and night getting them safely to my farm. I will say though that watching these little guys zoom off into the distance definitely put a smile on my face. Look at him, he's just... Bye! When I finally returned with the farm animals on day 70, I moved them to their pens and fed them. It was also time to feed my favorite little wheat lads as well, so I made my rounds. After all that, I finally went into my chest room and sorted my backpack out again. Now that the animals were sorted out, I could finally get back to planting the wheat field. I spent the entire day prepping the land, planting, and ended the day with placing two of my little guys. On days 72 and 73, I began my next project, a greenhouse. I knew I wanted a place to keep my special crops, and so I began building, trying to keep the style similar to the barn. Unlike the barn though, I didn't do a lot of pre-planning, so I went back and forth between material gathering and actual building. It also meant that I was less decisive around looks, and I even spent an entire night building a single arc. I spent the entirety of day 74 building. Instead of actual green glass, I settled on this frame glass from Quark. I just want to say that I'm very satisfied with my placement with this building. It lined up with the sunset in such a pretty way, it quickly became my favorite spot on the farm. I was very unsure of how I wanted to set up the greenhouse, and originally was thinking about using these larger pots, but I was unsure if they were compatible with the straw golems, and making them have built-in hoppers was expensive, and I was running low on iron. Nevertheless, I spent the entire day gathering clay, building pots, and ultimately changing my mind. I ended up setting up my greenhouse on day 76. My main purpose was to use it for mystical agriculture. The idea was that if I ended up having a lot of straw golems in here, they would be safer and better protected from the pillagers. I built planters trying to be more aesthetic at first, but this would have to change in the future. For the dirt, I used rich soil, which I had gathered from the spruce village. On day 77, I finally planted potatoes and carrots and the remaining plots next to the wheat field. At this point, the lack of iron was starting to get to me, and it became obvious I needed another good mining trip, so I upgraded my backpack and went to the mines, staying mostly focused on getting ores. I emerged on day 78 and smelted everything I had mined, and it was once again time to feed the little guys. When I checked in on the greenhouse, it was obvious that the current setup was causing some issues for the straw golem, so I reconstructed it so he didn't have to jump as much. On a good note though, the rich dirt was working, and it was working well, which meant that I definitely needed more. So on day 79, I looked up how to get compost the best way possible, as this is what rich dirt was made out of. I had most of the materials, but I was severely lacking in bone meal. For some reason, my main idea was to go to the nether here to look for bone blocks, which is a big source of bone meal, so I finally built another portal. Luckily, there was a soul valley nearby where I spawned that had some bow blocks and I got out of there quickly. <laughs> On day 80, I looked into mystical agriculture some more and how to make better tools. I began to use my essence that I had been farming to begin the path to make the pickaxe I wanted. I also looked into some blocks that I would need for crafting upgrades. Unfortunately, days 81 and 82 were corrupted footage, but basically it just consisted of me mining, so I guess you could say I did a little off-camera mining. <laughs> Oops. On day 83, I wanted to see if I could make seeds that made iron. Mystical agriculture allows you to grow a lot of materials, which I think is very cool because it really does set it up so that if all you want to do for the rest of your life is farm, then you could still do that and get resources. I had never done this mod before, so I had this very climactic moment of placing everything down and then nothing happening. Turns out it needs redstone activation, so try to. I also finally downloaded the What Are You Looking At mod because this allowed me to have more information on my crops and my little guys. 
Everything was really coming together, and when I woke up on day 84, I saw a really pretty view of my barn and thought, wow, I wish my house looked that good. And with that, I realized it was time to give my house a good makeover. I wanted it to match my barn and greenhouse, which meant spruce, dark oak, and maybe some warmer brick. After I collected some materials, I replaced all of the logs. I also replaced the trim with dark oak, realizing that the roof would probably need to be swapped too. So on day 85, I added new brick, new roof, and new windows, and man, it looked so much better. Right before I went to bed though, I fed my little guys and checked on the greenhouse. With the outside of my house done, it finally felt like it was time to decorate the inside. On day 86, I moved the kitchen, made myself some rice, and played around decorating my house with a fantasy furniture mod. Day 87 slash day 88 mostly consisted of myself adding custom foliage and creating more paths and adding more light around the farm. I also kept up with farming and slowly upgrading the pickaxe with magical essence, but nothing felt complete yet. I was missing something. So on day 89, I ventured into beekeeping. I had some bee stuff I gathered from the village, but it seemed like I needed more flowers, so I went out to get some. It was during this time that I really just admired how pretty this little Minecraft world was, and I was just feeling all kinds of nostalgia. Feeling inspired on day 90, I made some more custom trees with foliage and flowers I had collected. I figured, hey, I also still need chickens, so I made a little extension to the back of the farm. I hadn't seen any chickens in the village at all, so I threw the eggs I had and nothing. I was starting to worry that maybe I would have a chickenless farm, but I realized I had two more eggs in my backpack and with the last egg thrown, a chicken spawned. It was literally a miracle. Day 91 was chill as I really just checked in on the bees. I wanted to upgrade the greenhouse again, so using some of the hopper botany pots, I created an automatic harvest system in the back row. I think the little guys were a bit upset by this change, but ultimately accepted the help. On day 92, I spent the morning as usual, checking in on the bees, feeding the straw golems, and as I went to check in on the chicken, I noticed it had laid an egg. Unfortunately though, this egg gave me nothing, and I was starting to get more desperate to find my lonely chicken some friends. So I traveled to the only place I had luck in finding animals, the village. Unfortunately, even though I knew this, this village did not have any chickens, but I did find some bee houses and flowers, so I took them home with me. Also, once again, I was admiring how pretty everything was on my way home, even while being shot by a skeleton. With no luck finding chickens in the village, I started to wander from my house with some cages. And believe it or not, there was literally chickens like two seconds from my house that definitely made me scratch my head. I mean, how have I never seen these guys? Now that I had the chickens sorted, I wanted to start on my next build, a white wood gazebo. I was pretty set on using these mushroom planks, and again, for some reason, thought the best place to search would be the nether. I'm not the brightest farmer, okay? But as per usual, instead of finding something I was looking for, I found something else, a nether fortress. Now, I won't say I was upset, because I did find two of the greatest items I could, a straw hat and a magnet. I was really starting to look the part of the farmer. However, shortly after, I went home because the ambient noises of the nether just, just listen to this, okay? Just listen to this. With no luck there on day 94, I went out to find mushrooms in the overworld. Sure enough, I did. I grew them, chopped down the wood, only to find that the mod conflictions made it so that I could not get the planks I wanted. While this was upsetting, I still had the alternative of the dyed planks, so I started on the gazebo that night and built until I got jump scared, so maybe it was time for bed. I spent the entirety of day 95 focused on the gazebo and connecting it to the rest of the farm. I decided it would be the perfect place for my mystical agriculture setup. After that, I checked on the greenhouse and the bees and went to bed. On day 96, I woke up knowing that my little adventure was close to an end, and I wanted to spend at least one day being a bit silly, so I decided that I was going to cook a good meal. I settled on this salmon meal, which meant that it was time to fish. After making myself a banger fishing rod, I went to the ocean only to realize that I could probably just dive in and manually get the fish, but hey man, it's about the experience. While making this meal, I did keep thinking about how immersive Farmer's Delight made cooking, and overall, it just made this salmon meal so much more satisfying. After cooking, I did my normal farm rounds, enjoyed my meal, and went to bed.
After a chiller day, I woke up on day 97, ready to keep at the farm grind. So I spent the day decorating and providing more light to the farm. While the lampposts I kept making were super cute, I needed a more conventional way of lighting the area. And to me, that meant jack-o'-lanterns. In order to make jack-o'-lanterns, you do need to carve pumpkins, and I sat next to my barn carving pumpkins for what felt like a whole day itself. But once I had placed down the lanterns along with some normal pumpkins, leaves, and grass, this farm was not only well lit, but it began to feel more full of life. I guess you could say I was finally feeling satisfied. Day 98 was a perfect day, as when I went to check on the greenhouse that morning, I had learned that I had farmed enough essence to make the pickaxe I wanted. And while this feels like just a small thing, it was really interesting to me to make this really overpowered item with mostly farming. But it wasn't perfect yet. I still needed to make the mining augment, so I did in my very lovely gazebo. But it was getting late and I needed to go to bed. But oh boy, I was excited to test it out the next day. I rushed out of bed that morning and went down to the mines to test my silly pickaxe, and I will say, it was definitely worth it. Not only that, but I had accomplished a goal I set for myself. With my new shiny tool complete, I spent the rest of the day tending to my farm. It was finally day 100, and honestly, I had no idea how to comprehend or feel about this. I kind of wanted more, mostly because it had felt like 100 days would be a lot longer than it was. I reflected on how I came into this process with the idea of being a farmer and not an explorer or a fighter or a miner or much of a builder and yet I was all of that. Which made me think maybe I had found the ultimate role for myself in Minecraft. And even though it was mostly in the name of just protecting my silly guys, I had a lot of fun. So I spent the last day waiting for the sun to set and as it set I was excited because while this 100 days had ended for you all, for me there was definitely more. Hey guys, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Tootsie. She did another video that was also like this, but more focused on animal farming. And it had a bit of a different mod list. Um, also, just like most people here will probably recognize my name from Twitch and TikTok. And I think that's because I've been a bit scared to come onto YouTube and try out content like this, but she really inspired me. So please go watch her video and such. Also, if you're new and you made it this far, consider dropping a sub or a like. And if you want to join my Discord to get updates for when I post on YouTube or when I'm live on Twitch, the link is below. Thanks guys.